In the middle of a rainy field, a group of soldiers are huddled in front of a grave mourning. The loss of his comrade in front of the grave stands, a single boy named Ray, who is remembering the war in his memories. Ray watches Havard the man in the grave explode in front of him and cover him in blood. The bloodied Ray notices that another comrade, a girl with blonde hair, is lying down in a pool of blood. Ray releases a blood-curdling scream, causing frost to start spreading around him and a giant dome of ice encapsulates the battlefield, his comrades outside watch in amazement. The ice dome disappears and all that's left is Ray carrying the girl's body in a change of scene. Ray had just enrolled and is now attending the Academy of Sorcery. Ray enters the majestic gates with the other students out of nowhere. A girl bumps into Ray, but Ray is able to catch her before she falls down. The girl turns red in the face and her friends giggle at her situation. Ray apologizes and the girl Shyless scolds him for standing in the middle of the road. Ray explains that he's a new student which shocked the girls. They have heard that there is only one new student, but he's neither from a noble family nor a sorcerer's family. The new student is rumored to be from a normal family. That would mean that Ray is that student upon realizing that he's an ordinary the girls get grossed out and the bystanders who happen to hear them start gossiping about him. One guy confronts Ray and introduces himself as Albert Alium. Ray amicably introduces himself as Ray White and offers to shake his hand in a greeting. However, Albert just slaps his hand away and tells him that the academy is only for aristocrats, or at least someone born in a sorcerer's family. He declares that the academy is not for an ordinary, like Ray Ray just ignores him, which infuriates Albert he tries to take hold of Ray, but Ray just calmly dodges. Him Albert is about to punch Ray again when a red-haired girl suddenly interrupts them Albert is shocked, since the girl is from one of the three top families Albert gives a disgusted. Look at Ray and exclaims that he'll never accept an ordinary, and then he leaves the redhead girl introduces herself to Ray as Amelia Rose and asks him. If he's okay, Ray thanks Amelia for her assistance and shakes her hand, Amelia congratulates Ray for being the first ordinary. In their school and tells him that he can always come to her for help after the eventful morning, the Academy's entrance ceremony finally started the principal of Arnold Academy of Sorcery introduces herself to the students as Abby Garnett and makes an impassioned speech. She tells them that the Academy has recognized their talents as a sorcerer, but they should still work hard to become the best sorcerer they can be after Principal Spiel. The first year, student's representative is called for her own speech. It turns out that this is Amelia Rose. Herself in front of the adoring crowd, Amelia rouses her fellow students in overcoming the hardships that, that they will face after the ceremony. Ray goes to his classroom and introduces himself in front of the class. However, the reaction of the class was mixed. Some of them welcomed him gladly, while some started gossiping on how a commoner like him entered the academy. In the first place, the teacher introduces herself as Helena Grady or Miss Grady and tells Ray to sit down. Amelia once again welcomes Ray which shocks all the other students. They cannot believe that a member of the three top families is talking to an ordinary like Ray. Ray sits down and distractedly looks out the window at the city outside his memories from the war come flashing back. Ray snaps out of his distraction when a chalk comes hurtling towards his head. Ray definitely catches the chalk between his fingers, but it abruptly explodes coating his face in white. Daddy. Miss Gray actually threw a chalk at him since he was not paying attention in class. His classmates laughed at him and Ray apologizes for getting distracted and class. Now that Ray is listening, Miss Gray continues her lecture. She calls Amelia and asks her to explain. The different ranks of sorcerers Amelia stands up and enumerates the five ranks from lowest to highest. They are bronze, silver, gold, platina, and a holy rank. Grand Miss Gray then explains that there are only seven grand sorcerers in any era. They are the seven people who excel most in sorcery and are known as the world's seven strongest sorcerers. Miss Gray then elaborates that the identities of the seven sorcerers are usually a mystery. However, a few of them have already publicly identified themselves. The grand sorcerers who reveal their identity are first Abby Garnett, the principal of the academy where they are currently studying with her firepower. She is called the burning sorcerer aside from her. The next known grand sorcerer is Carol, Caroline, who is more commonly known as the charming sorcerer she's, a famous person in society due to her her work as a sorcery researcher. 
she is also the only grand sorcerer who is actively spreading her name. Another grand sorcerer is the sorcerer hailed as the hero in the Far East War called the Iceblade Sorcerer, however, Iceblade mysteriously vanished after the war ended. Meanwhile, two of the remaining seven sorcerers have never disclosed their names. Miss Gray, then, motivates the students telling them that, as long as they are in the academy, they should aim to obtain the position of the seven strongest sorcerers Albert, one of the students listening and the guy who confronted Ray earlier, raises his hand and asks the teacher. Why they are letting an ordinary in the academy if their aim is to become the strongest? Miss Gray angrily tells the students that everyone equally passed a trial, an interview before getting accepted, no matter their social status after the lecture, the class sorcery practical commences, Miss Gray. Again asks Amelia to explain what sorcery is Amelia fluidly explains that sorcery is basically a technique to reconstruct the world's first material. Prima Materia, Miss Gray, then further explains that the main concept of sorcery is called code theory to do this. First, you must convert Prima Materia into code next rearrange or edit. The code then add or remove additional information. Lastly, materialize the code. She then further demonstrates that things you create can also be removed. After her explanation, Miss Gray asks the class if they have any questions. Amelia raises her hand and asks if there is a limit to the things that can be created with Prima Materia. Mr. Gray answers that technically there isn't a limit and it all depends on the sorcerer's ability. She clarifies that materials can be separated into four types, namely solid, liquid gas and plasma. After her explanation, a student wrapped in a coat timidly asks if she used anti-material code in erasing the material. Miss Gray tells her no and explains that there is currently no sorcerer who can use anti-material code Ainsworth's double code theory is so advanced that students don't have to understand it. Next, the students start doing sorcery themselves. Amelia was easily able to follow the steps and materialize a rose of ice in her palms. Her performance earns her the admiration of her classmates. Meanwhile Ray just materializes a cube of ice, which quickly disappears seeing Ray's work. His classmates start gossiping again questioning. How could he have possibly entered the academy in the first place Albert slams his hand on the table and cannot accept that a talentless wizard is in their academy after class Ray leaves and heads to the library there. He meets a fellow classmate. The timid girl wrapped in a coat Ray asks her if she's looking for Ainsworth's book since she asked about it earlier in class. Ray introduces himself to the girl and the girl introduces herself as Eliza Griffith. Eliza then tells Ray that she adores Dr. Ainsworth and aims to be a doctor herself. She is also happy that she was able to meet a fellow Ainsworth fan. Ray then asks Eliza why she's always wearing a hood when she has pretty hair. Ray's questions, shocked Eliza, who attempts to hide her hair again, but Ray stops. Her Eliza then explains that she is actually conscious of her weird pointy ears. However, Ray tells her that her ears are very pretty and asks if she is a half-elf. Eliza tells him that her mother is an elf and she has always been teased about being a half-elf. From the moment she was born rages, compliments her and advises her not to hide her face, Eliza blushes and tells Ray that he seems to be very mature. This awakens a painful memory in Ray when Havard used to tell him that he was too mature for his age after school Ray heads to his dormitory room as he entered a young man named Evie Armstrong was waiting for him inside Evie states that he's not like other nobles, as he only believes in one thing, the two are seemingly going to shake hands, but instead Evie starts squeezing Ray's hands, Evie and Ray, then bonded over. How well built their muscled bodies are the next morning. Ray goes out on his morning, jog when he passes over a student watering, the plants Ray apologizes for disturbing the girl and introduces himself the girl smiles and praises Ray for exercising so early in the morning. She then introduces herself as Rebecca Bradley a third year student at the academy. A little while later, Ray and Evie are walking together to class. Ray tells him about the girl. He met that morning, which shocks Evie since Ray doesn't know much about noble society. Evie starts explaining it to him. There are three families on the pinnacle of nobility and are on par with royalty. They are very influential in every aspect of the empire. These three families are Rose, Bradley and Algren. He also points out that Amelia is the eldest daughter of the Rose family inside the academy. A running student bumps into Ray Ray Apology rises and introduces himself. Meanwhile, the girl recognizes him as the rumored ordinary. 
Thankfully, Ray calls the girl, charming twin tail, lady, which seems to put the girl in a good mood. She introduces herself as Clarice Cleveland and starts spouting her love of twin tails as a hairstyle Ray apologizes again, since he doesn't recognize the Cleveland family name. The girl gets sad and mumbles that her family is actually pretty well known. Ray then tells her that her family must be full of pretty people, since Clarice is very pretty herself. This gladdens Clarice, who continues on her way in a rush Ray, then visits the principal and salutes her. However, Principal Abby tells him that they are both retired, so he doesn't need to be polite anymore. She tells Ray to just call her Abby Chan, which Ray just casually does. This makes her laugh and tell Ray that he's just like Havard the two share in nostalgia as Abby stares at a photo on her desk. The photo contains their team happily smiling with Ray just a small child mourning. Classes start and Ray's first class is swordsmanship practice for his first bout. Ray will be sparring with Albert the students. Spectating start calling Ray the withered wizard. This confuses Amelia, who is also watching. Thankfully Evie was standing beside her and explains to her that they are calling Ray a withered sorcerer, it's a pun involving the word wizard and wizard, which has the same pronunciation when the duel starts Albert quickly slashes at Ray, while shouting that a weak sorcerer has no right to stand before him, however, Ray easily deflects his sword and tells him that his nickname doesn't really bother him. Ray's performance shocks, everyone Albert becomes increasingly enraged and stabs at Ray. However, Ray just meets the stab with a stab of his own race technique, and sword proves to be more formidable as Albert's wooden sword shatters upon meeting Ray as Albert falls to his knees and the instructor announces Ray as the winner in the distance Principal Abby was watching the duel and smiling she's glad that her student Ray White, more famously known as the Iceblade Sorcerer finally seems to be enjoying the academic life.